Here I'll show you how to find the next empty cell or row in Excel using VBA and macros. I'll show you how to input data into the cell as well as selecting it and two different ways to select empty cells. The first empty cell in a column, so that would be this cell, or the last one at the very end, which would be this one. Before we start, check the video description and click the link to teach Excel so you can download the files for the tutorial and follow along. And make sure to subscribe and accept notifications so you can see all the new tutorials. First up, I'm going to show you how the macros work, and then I'll show you a few variations of the macros so you can see different ways to do it, and that might help you better integrate the code with what you're trying to do in Excel. As always, download the workbook so you can just copy-paste the code that we're going to talk about in a moment. First, let's do the macros, show you how to use them, Alt-F-8, and you can see we have a few macros here. Let's go with the very basic one, select, select the next empty row, and hit run and you can see it selects this cell right here. Let's go ahead and do the last empty row, this one right here. Now I'll show you what it's like if you select the entire row. We have to go to the VBA window to change the macro just a little bit for that. I included them in the same macro. So I'm going to uncomment this and comment this for the select next empty row. Okay, select next next empty row and if you select the entire row it goes just like that as if you had clicked this right here and now that you see how they work let us go ahead and go through the code so alt f11 I will put it back to how it was and there's also a select entire row section for the select a last empty row macro right here uncommented but now let's go through the macros okay so what I'm gonna do you saw that I had four macros right here. Select next empty row, select last empty row, and then some variations on that. Input the value into the next empty row, and this will work for both of the previous examples, selecting the next and last empty row. And then how to store the reference of the next empty row. So this last one will be just showing you how to better structure this type of macro so that we can get a reference to that cell or row and then use it later within our code. And if you download this workbook, actually, just go down here and double click module one and you're going to get all this stuff right here. But for now, I'm going to close this so we have some more space and let's talk about the first macro. So you see, it is just one line of code to select the next empty row. And it may seem confusing, but let's go through it now and I think you'll understand it a little bit better. So you want to start out by telling the macro, telling Excel, which cell you would like to start with. So this determines what column we use. So if you use column A, you're going to put A1 here. Column B, put column or put B1, C, C1, D, D1, etc. And whatever row you use, in this case it's row 1, that's the row it's going to start at in order to perform sort of the calculation that gets the next empty row or cell. So it seems kind of confusing but let's move to the next part and it'll actually make it a little bit easier to understand. So then we have dot end Excel down. Now what's the easiest way to explain this? Well, let me go to the worksheet really quick. Remember range A1? All right, so let's go back here. Now, when you put range A1, it is as if you have selected cell A1. And the dot end part is essentially hitting control arrow key down. So really, that is all that range A1 and dot end Excel down are doing. So think of dot end as hitting the control key and Excel down is using the down arrow key on the keyboard. There's also Excel up, left and right, or two left and two right. So you can do it with every arrow key, left, right, up, down. Now, you'll notice that once you do this, select A1 and hit control down, you get cell A3, but you don't want cell A3, you want the empty one. So we have to take this reference and push it down one. So we get to offset. And if I, you'll see offset one here, that pushes it down one row. 
if I delete this and put the parentheses back, you'll see it has two arguments, both optional. Offset it by the row or the column. We want a row offset. How much? Just one. So we put one. So that bumps the reference down one. So now we've started here, control down. We've offset it by one, and we are here. But now we have to decide what to do once we are here. Do you want to select it? Do you want to input something into it? Do you want to select the entire row? What do you want to do? Well, for the simple example, we are just going to select it. And so the result of all of that is what I showed you a moment ago. Select the next empty row, Alt F8, next empty row, just like that. So range, where you want to start, dot end, Excel down, where you want to go using a control and an arrow key, essentially. Offset, bump the guy down by one. Select what you want to do with that guy now that you're there. Here, we select it. Now, if you want to adapt that to select the entire row, we simply add one more thing. You can see everything here is the same, even the dot select, except for entire row. And if we go ahead and delete this and type period, you can start typing. You can see you can also select entire column if you want, but that's not what we want here. Select entire row. Well, actually, just entire row, and then you do something with it. In this case, we're going to select it. Now, I'm going to comment this out so it doesn't run, but leave it in there as an example. So uncomment it if you want it to run, and then just comment this line out. Now, the very next one, select last empty row. It's very similar, but there's a few things that have to be changed. So we have the big main parts that are just the same, right? You tell it where you want to start. You tell it what you want to do with the control key. Then you offset it, and then you figure out what to do with the empty cell. But this one, select last empty row, so remember, that's the one that will select this cell right here. We have to, in order to get the last empty row in the range and skip all these dudes in the middle, any empty guys in the middle, we have to start from the bottom and come up. So it is essentially as if we start down here in this cell, and then we do Control, Up. We get this cell, offset it down one, we get this cell. So that's all we're doing. In order to do that, we have to use this sort of convention. Or there's a couple different ways to do it, actually, but this one's kind of easy. Follows this one right here, where you go range A1. Well, here you do range A, and then you have to say what the number of the last cell is. Since there are older versions of Excel that have fewer rows, well, you just use rows.count. That counts how many rows are in the spreadsheet. That'll give you the last row, so a million whatever. And then using the ampersand here just combines the A with the million whatever, the number of the last row. So this effectively ends up being, what is it actually? 1,048,576. So that's what this is, A, 1 million, blah, 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 blah. So seems confusing, but it's not. Just rows.count gets the last row, combines it with range A. OK, that's where we start. Now we do dot end, hold down the control key, same thing. But this time, instead of going down, we go up. We use the up arrow key, Excel up. Just like last time, we have to offset it by one row. And we do select. Selecting the entire row, same deal, except for you have entire row down here. So it's easy peasy, no problem. Now let's say that you want to put a value into the cell, so let's go, all right, Alt F8, input value, next empty row, run, hi. That should probably be a last empty row. <laughs> let's change that. I believe it's the same one as this one, yeah, last empty row. And so all that we did here that's a little bit different is change the select to dot value. 
everything else is the same. We go for the last row, dot end XL up, offset one, but then instead of selecting the cell, we put something in it. We change the value of that cell. You do that by changing the value property. So dot value instead of dot select. Once you've done that, you just do an equal sign and whatever text you want or whatever you want in there really. So you can see that's pretty easy to do. But now what I want to do, I want to end the tutorial showing you a better way to, well, get the reference of the empty cell. So here, we just did it right here, one line. Okay, that's easy peasy. But once you have a bigger macro, you're not just going to want to have one line like this in the middle of your macro. You want to have a little section at the top of your macro, probably, or wherever it's needed, that gets the reference to that empty cell, and then you can use it later. So what we do for that is we create a variable. I'm going to go ahead and add a comment variable to hold the range reference. Okie dokie. So you just do dim, give it a name. I've named it next empty cell. And here you want to set it as a range. Range can be one cell, can be multiple cells. Now here we have the same code as before. And actually, I could take off the select. Select is not required. So we choose the cell to start at, the direction of the arrow key with the control, so control up, and offset it by one to get the empty cell. But now we want to put this reference inside of a variable. So we have the variable here. We set it equal to the reference. But remember, since we are setting an object, we are putting an object in here instead of a value, instead of a number, instead of text, we must use the set keyword because we are going to set this variable equal to this object, basically. So hopefully that'll help you remember that you need to put set right here. Now, once you've done that, you can do whatever you want with it. We're down here. You can change the value of it just by referencing the variable. So blah, blah, dot value equals high again. Or you'll see once we just start typing next empty cell dot, you have all the options that you would need. So select or whatever you want or dot entire row dot select whatever you want. So maybe I will leave this in here input text. Select the entire row. And I'm going to comment this guy out. And now let's see how it works. Alt F11, Alt F8, store reference. Should be last empty row again, but whatever. Run, high again. So yes, it's a little bit more complicated to do this. But actually, let me, before I finish, do that. So it's a little more complicated to do it this way, but the beauty of it is that between here and here, you could have tons of code, whatever you want to do. And then when you want to finally use that empty cell or empty row to do whatever, just reference this variable. That way you don't have to have this code just randomly put inside the macro. It can make maintaining it much more difficult. So just have a nice, neat little section here, put it in a variable, and use that beautiful, simply named variable later in your macro, wherever you need it. And that's how you can find the next or last empty row or cell and put a value in it, select it, or do whatever you want with it using Excel, VBA, and macros. I hope you liked the tutorial. If it was helpful, don't forget to give it a thumbs up and make sure to subscribe and accept notifications so you can see all the new tutorials.